This is our first video for elementary logic. Logic is a branch of philosophy, but other mathematicians would tell you that math is essentially logic. And so we shall introduce some symbols that we use in symbolic logic. What is a statement? A statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both true and false at the same time. Robin Padilla defeated Manny Pacquiao in a boxing match. This is a statement, even though this may not be true. Get out of the building now. Well, this is not a declarative sentence, so this is not a statement. 101 is a prime number, a statement. x squared minus 1 is equal to 15. It is a statement. In particular, you call this an open statement. It's going to be true or false depending on the value of x. So this is a statement and you call it an open statement in particular. We have simple statements and compound statements. So a simple statement is a statement that conveys a single idea. A compound statement is a statement that conveys two or more than two ideas. You will connect those ideas by connectives. And the connectives that we use in logic and in math, okay, are and, so that is our symbol for and, or, if then, okay, the arrow sign, if then, or sometimes we call it uh, the implication or the conditional statement or the implication, and if and only if. And that is our symbol for if and only if. So we use these connectives to form compound statements. Logical connectives and symbols. So we shall go back to those connectives and we shall show what are those symbols and what are the type of statements that go with those symbols. So actually not is not a connective, it is a modifier, okay? So if you have a statement P, not P, not, not is a modifier, and this is the symbols that we can use in logic or symbolic logic. So a statement that is accompanied by this symbol is what you call a negation. P and Q, okay, so P is a, is a statement, Q is another statement. We can connect them through the connective and. Our symbol for that is this. And when our statements are connected by and, we call that statement a conjunction. P or Q. This is the symbol. And a statement that is connected by or a compound statement that is formed by or is what you call a disjunction. If P, then Q. The connective is if then, and this is our symbol. If P, then Q, or P implies Q. You call this a conditional statement or also the implication statement. P if and only if Q. This is the connective. In symbols, we write it in this way. P if and only if Q. Compound statements that are formed by this is what you call a biconditional statement. Example 1.27, math language and compound statements. So let's say, for example, P is a statement which says X is a rational number. Q is another statement which says X is a multiple of two. Write P and Q in math language. Write in math language the negation of P. Write in math language P or Q. Write in math language the biconditional statement Q if and only if P. So how do we write P in math language? X is a rational number. Well, this one. Okay, so this is your math language. X is an element of the set of rational numbers or X is a rational number. How about Q? X is a multiple of two. Well, in math language, this is how you write it. X is equal to two times N where n is a natural number. That is how you write in math sentence the statement x is a multiple of 2. Write in math language the negation of p. So if p 
means x is a rational number, the negation of p is x is not a rational number or x is not an element of the set of rational numbers. But it sounds awful. If you were to read the sentence that way, it sounds awful. What you can say is simply x is not a rational number. Right in math language, the compound statement p or q. So x is a rational number or x is a multiple of 2. So how do you write it in math language? x is a rational number or x is a multiple of 2. Write in math language the biconditional statement q if and only if p. Well, x is a multiple of 2 if and only if x is a rational number. Again, we are not concerned with the with them being false or true. That is not our concern. Okay? So a statement can be false or it can be true. Example 1.27, math language and compound statements. Okay, so these are our statements. X is an element of A. X is an element of B. X is an element of either A or B. X is an element of A and B. So we shall have here a statement in the language of symbolic logic. And then we will write it in its uh, equivalent sentence in English language. And then we will write it in its equivalent form using math language. Okay, so this is a biconditional statement. P and Q if and only if S. P and Q if and only if S. How do we write it in English sentence? Okay, so P and Q. X is an element of A and X is an element of B if and only if X is an element of A and B. So that is how you write in plain English sentence. Okay, so let us write it now in math language. In math language, X is an element of A and X is an element of B if and only if X is an element of the intersection of A and B. So if X is an element of A and B, that means it is an element of both A and B. It is an element of the intersection of A and B. So we can even improve this. Okay, we can still improve this math sentence because in a math language, we prefer shorter sentences or a sentence that requires fewer characters. So in fact, we can remove the parentheses here. We can remove the parentheses and this one is equivalent to this one. Again, we shall be given a sentence written in the language of symbolic logic. We will write it in English sentence and then we will write it again in math sentence using math language. Okay, P or Q if and only if R. P or Q if and only if R. In plain English sentence, this is X is an element of A or X is, is an element of B if and only if X is an element of either A or B. Okay? Plain English language, although it sounds awful. Okay, how do we write it in math sentence using the language and symbols of math? X is an element of A or X is an element of B if and only if X is an element of the union of A and B. Okay, so when X is an element of either A or B, that means X is the element of the union of A and B. So we can improve this sentence even better by removing the grouping symbol. You know what? I wrote this book like three years ago. And I am concerned about students who will see this sentence for the first time. So I do not want to confuse them. So I, I chose to write them in, in, uh, in the parentheses. I chose to use parentheses. But, but we can improve this sentence by removing the parentheses altogether. Another one. Again, a sentence written in symbolic logic as if and only if P. In plain English, X is an element of A and B, even only if X is an element of A. Let us write that in math language. X is an element of the intersection of A and B, or X is, a, is an element of A intersection B. Okay, that is the meaning of this. 
If x is an element of a and b, x is an element of the intersection of a and b. If and only if x is an element of a. Or better yet, we can remove the parenthesis and write it in this way. Another one. Again, a sentence in the language of symbolic logic. We will write it in English. We will write the sentence using math language. If not P, then not S. Or not P implies not S. English. If X is not an element of A, that's the negation, then X is not an element of A and B. Math sentence. If X is not an element of A, then X is not an element of the intersection of A and B.